Hello and welcome back to another lecture of this complete Node.js course. In this lecture, let's very quickly refactor the API features that we have implemented over the last couple of lectures. Now, we are going to do it not just to make the code a little bit cleaner, but it will also make the code more modular and more reusable in the future. Currently, if you see this Get All Movies API, inside this API, we are writing some logics for filtering the data, for sorting the data, for limiting fields, and also for the pagination. And currently, these features are only available for movies model. Now, if we want to use the same features for other resources, then we will have to write the same code again. And that would not be very practical. For example, currently this pagination, limiting fields, sorting and filtering, currently we can only do it on the movies model because we are writing logic so that these features can only be applied on this movies model, right? In the future, let's say if we also have the users model and there also we want to implement the sorting feature or the filtering feature, we will have to write the code again. We will have to write the same logic on the users model, right? So here, what we are going to do is we are going to create a separate class for all these features and then any resource can use these features by simply instantiating the class. Let's actually see that in action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder. I'll call it utils. Inside this utils folder, we are going to keep all our utility related codes. And for now, inside this utils folder, I will simply create a single file and I'm going to call it API features. It is going to be a class, a JavaScript class. And to create a class, we use the class keyword. We specify the name for the class. And here we are going to call it API features. Okay. Now we also want to use this class in some other files. So what we are going to do is we are going to export this class as well. For that, we can say module.exports. And here we are going to export this API features class. All right, this is just a basic JavaScript code. Inside this class, the first thing which we need is we need a constructor. So for that, we use this constructor keyword. And this constructor, it is going to take two parameters. The first parameter will be a query object. And the second parameter will be the query string. So let me call it as maybe query str. Okay, now what are we going to assign to this query parameter and this query string parameter? Well. Let me actually show you that. So in the movies controller, we are going to use this API features class. So to use this class, first we need to import it. So let me go ahead and let me create a variable. I will call it API features equals, and then we are going to use this require keyword. And to this require method, we need to specify the path of the API features class. So we need to move one folder up in there. We are going to have this utils folder. And inside that utils folder, we have this API features class. Okay, so here we are importing the API features class. Now, in order to use this API features class, first we need to instantiate it. So here, maybe at this line, I'm going to create a variable. I'll simply call it features. And to instantiate a class, we use the new keyword and the name of the class. And here, when we are using this parenthesis on the name of this class, we are basically calling the constructor of this API features class. So we are basically calling this constructor. Now, when we are calling this constructor, we can pass the value for this query and this query string parameter. So for the query parameter, we are basically going to pass the query object on which we want to perform these operations like sorting, filtering, etc. So for that, I'm going to pass movie.find. We have learned that this find method returns a query object, right? So this find method, this expression here, it is going to return a query object and we are going to assign that query object to this query variable. And for the query string parameter, we are going to pass request.query, okay? So this request.query stores the query string as a key value pair. Basically this request.query is an object and in that object, whatever query string we specify in the URL that is stored as a key value pair. And these are the two things which we need in order to write the logic for filtering, sorting, pagination and limiting fields. So here we are instantiating this API features class. Now let's go to this API features class 
and here let's create two properties and in order to create a property we can simply say this dot and the property name here i'm going to call the property as query so this dot query equals and to this query property i want to assign the value which we are going to receive for this query parameter in the same way i'm going to create another property let's say this dot query string i will simply call it as query str and to this i will assign the value which we are going to receive for this query str parameter so for this query property we are basically assigning it a query object and to this query string we are assigning the request.query object okay so here we have these two properties and when we create a property like this these properties will be available throughout this api features class now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a function a method i'll simply call it filter and inside this filter method we are going to write the logic for filtering the data and we already have that logic here so i'll simply copy it okay and let's go to api features class let me close this server.js file and here let's paste that logic let's remove this console.log statement from here and let's also remove this commented code from here and here we need to replace this request.query with this dot query string now you might ask why can't we replace it with this query string because we are receiving this query string as a parameter to this constructor so it can only be accessed inside this constructor but this this dot query and this dot query string these are the properties of this api features class and they can be accessed anywhere inside this class and that's why here instead of request dot query we are going to use this request dot query string which is basically assigned with this request dot query object so wherever we are using this request dot query there we will replace it with this dot query string and in here if you see the variable name here is same as this property name so what i'll do is i will simply name it as query string okay and let's go ahead and let's use it wherever it is required so that it does not confuse us okay this is just a variable but this is a property and that's why i just want to name them differently and here also we need to pass query string and here instead of using this movies dot find inside this query property we are going to receive the query object and what query object are we passing here here we are passing movie dot find right so here instead of using movie dot find we can simply say this dot query okay and on that we can use the find method like this and here we are going to assign the result of this expression back to this dot query okay so here we are modifying the query object by filtering data from there so let's say we have eight movie objects and we want to get all those movie objects where the duration is let's say greater than 117 minutes so in that case this query will filter the data from the movies object and it will return the filtered data and we want to assign that filtered data back to this dot query and we are doing this so that in the future we are going to create other methods like sort pagination and limiting fields so we want to chain those methods and when we are going to chain those methods we want to use them on the updated result updated query object so here we have assigned the result of this expression back to this dot query property okay and after that we also want to return the current object from this filter method for that here we can say return this now this here is pointing to the current object using this api feature class we can create multiple objects and this here it points to the current object now why do we need to return this here that's because i'm going to create another method called sort and here inside this method we are going to write the sorting logic so what i want is when we use this filter method on an instance of this api feature class i should be able to chain this sort method on that filter method let me actually show you what i want to do here so here this is going to return us an instance of api features class on that i want to call the filter method okay and on that filter so this expression will return us the filtered data the filtered movie objects and on that filtered movie object i also want to call the sort method now 
in order to call this sort method, this sort is actually a method of this API features class, right? So this sort method or this filter method can only be called on an instance of the API features class. So here on this expression, when I want to call this sort method, this expression must return an instance of API features class. Then only I can call this sort method, right? So because of that, from this filter method, we are returning an instance of API features class so that we can chain this sort method like we are doing here because this sort method can be called only on an instance of API features class because this sort method is defined inside this API features class. I hope it is clear. So inside this sort method, let's go ahead and let's write the sorting logic. So here we have the sorting logic. I will copy this. And I will also comment it. Let's also comment this above line here. Okay. And let's go ahead and let's write the sorting logic inside this sort method. All right. And again, we need to replace this request.query with this dot query string. Here also it should be replaced with this dot query string. And we need to replace this query with this dot query. Okay. Let me copy this and let me replace it here here and here and finally let's also go ahead and let's return the current instance from this sort method so basically return this again why we are returning this because we want to create another method or let's say here i have used the sort method first and then i want to filter okay so i can use this filter method only on an instance of API features class. So in this case, this sort method must return an instance of API features class so that we can access this filter method on that instance. Okay. In the same way, let's also go ahead and let's create another method. Let's call it limit fields. Okay. And in there, let's write the logic for limiting the fields. So let me scroll down and let's copy this logic from here. Let's also comment it and let's paste it here. Again, let's replace this request.query with this dot query string. Let's do it everywhere, wherever it is required. So here also, let's replace this request.query with this dot query string. Okay, and here, let's replace this query with this dot query. Let me copy it and let's place it here let me remove this commented code from here and let's also remove this console.log statement and we also need to return this from here so that we can chain another methods all right and let's finally let's create this paginate method and in there, let's write the logic for pagination. So I'll go back to this movies controller. I'll copy this logic from here. And let's paste it here. Again, we need to replace this request.query with this dot query string. Let me do this everywhere, wherever it is required. Okay. And let's replace this query with this dot query. Let's do the same thing here. And this also should be replaced with this dot query string. Now here you see we have an error because this await keyword can only be used inside a method which is async. So this paginate is not an async method. And we are trying to use this await keyword here and that's why we have this error. So for now what I will do is I will simply comment this if statement. We'll see how we can resolve it later. And from this method also we want to return this so that another method from this class can be changed. Okay, let's save the changes here. You see, we have this error. Some error has occurred. So basically for some reason, it is not able to connect to the database. Let me save it again. All right, now the DB connection is successful. Let's go to this movies controller. And here I will comment this code. I will also comment this code. Okay. And here, after this filter and sort, let's also chain limit fields and let's also chain paginate okay 
and here this expression it is going to return an instance of api features because if you see the last method which we are chaining here is paginate and again this paginate can only be called on an instance of api features class right because it is defined inside this api features class and this method also here it is returning an instance of api features so this expression here it is going to return an instance of api features class which is assigned to this features variable now on this features variable basically which is an instance of this api features class on this instance we have a property called query and this query property is going to store a query object right so we are going to await for that query object to return a result and we are going to assign that result to a variable called movies okay and then we are passing that movies whatever result we are getting inside this movies variable in the response here as you can see so let me go ahead and let me save the changes in this file as well and let's test this implementation so let me go to the postman here let's first test if this endpoint is working or not so if i click on the send button this endpoint is working as expected as you can see the length is five so we are going to get all the five movies which is highest rated and if i remove this and if i simply make a request to this endpoint here we should get all the movies as you can see the length is eight now let's say i want to filter this movie so here i want to filter all those movies where the duration is greater than 117 minutes okay if i click on the send button you see in the result we have four movies and all these four movies will have duration which is greater than 117 minutes okay now let's say we also want to sort this result so for that we can use another query string called sort and there let's say we want to sort by price so now this result where we have only four movies it should be sorted by price let's actually see that so let me make a request here and now again we have four movies in the response now these movie objects should be sorted by price so as you can see here the price is 50 57 57 and 59 so the result is now sorted in ascending order by price then let's say we also want to limit the fields so here i will use this fields query string and there i will specify the fields which we want in the result so i want name duration and price and now in the result for the movies object we should have only those fields okay and finally let's also say we want to have pagination so i will add a page query string where i will say i want to go to page one and i want to limit the number of objects the number of documents to three per page so when i click on the send button now we should see only three documents in the result okay and if i say page equals two in that one we should see only one document because the filtered document was four in the first page we are displaying three documents in the second page we should have only one document okay so these features are still working as expected the only thing now is that we have created a separate class for these features and now these features can be used on any model earlier we were only able to use it on the movies model but now since we have refactor our code and we have created a separate api features class now these features can be used on any model in the future we are going to create a user model so we can use these features on the user model as well without rewriting the same code and if we go back to this movies controller there we can remove all these commented codes and in this way we have made our get all movies api a bit leaner and more readable so here you can see we have only two lines of code to get the movies data where we are also applying the filter sorting limiting and pagination and once we have the desired result we are simply passing it in the response now i will not remove this commented code because i just simply want to keep it for your reference and what we can also do here is we can move these chained methods into a separate line to make it more readable like this and that's it 
now we have a reusable class called api features and from this class we can reuse this filter logic this sort logic this limiting fields logic and this pagination logic this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day